Welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast, a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. I'm Tony Guerra, pharmacist, publisher, and professional editor, bringing you interviews and advice on succeeding in your residency journey. You can sign up for the email list at pharmacyresidencypodcast.com to get your free LOI template or get editing help working one-on-one with me at residency.teachable.com. Let's get started with the show. All right. Uh, welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast. I wanted to talk a little bit about what you're supposed to do between now and match day uh, and what you should do uh, in terms of uh, phase two. So let's kind of go through the Reddit post because I think that it's, well, let's go through the calendar first and then we'll go through the Reddit post. So first things first, match day is March 15th. I'm sure you guys have a big red X on your calendar. And <clears throat> that's when phase one's released. What time is it released? Well, it's released early in the morning. Uh, a lot of times I want to say like eight or seven in the morning. And a lot of times you'll get an email from the site saying, Hey, we're excited that you're going to be uh, coming by and, you know, going to be a resident next year. It's awesome. Uh, and sometimes that comes before it. And then you go and you see the social media feeds, hashtag blessed. Oh my gosh. I matched at such and such. And what I want to tell you is if you didn't match, so the people that matched will be posting. <laughs> the people that didn't match will not be posting in general. Every once in a while, there is one person that will. But if you didn't match, you're going to feel like you are a failure, that every single person matched because every single person, every single post on social media is you know picking up these uh, matches. So uh, when it comes down to it, um, you know, right now the last the match rate was seventy seven percent last year. It'll be well over eighty percent this year, and you'll feel like, oh my gosh, I don't understand. Four out of five that got an interview matched. I feel really bad about myself. Well, this is the thing. It, it's it's usually that you, you applied to the wrong places. Um, you only get to apply to maybe 10, 12 sites out of four thousand. Two, you may have a toxic recommendation. And if you can get rid of that recommendation, then you can match in phase two. Uh, And three, maybe they got the vibe that you really didn't want to do residency, but you felt like you had to. And that tends to be another thing where it's like, okay, well, you know, maybe maybe residency right now isn't uh, the thing. But uh, just know that it's going to get easier and easier to get a residency over the next couple of years. So uh, I can truly say that, you know, if you didn't try, if you didn't work out this year, you can try next year. But let's talk about uh, what to do uh, until uh, phase, until you, the match day and and so forth. So um, right now, you know, as a, as a, you know, somebody who's in a an appy, you're probably not very helpful, not very, you know, you're, you're all you're thinking about is the 15th and what's going to happen on that day. And then on that day, you're just as useless. Like it's, you're telling everybody you, you're so excited and, um, you know, and you should be. But that's the thing is that when it comes down to it, um, I think that the best thing you can do is, Maybe you can't study for the NAPLEX because you're so excited, but you should set up a NAPLEX studying plan because it is true that about 20% will not pass the NAPLEX. But even worse is that you know you, you can't really figure out the MPJE unless you only apply to residencies in your state and you're only going to take a job in your state. But it's kind of tough to know which you know, state you need to study for. But I think that right on match day is when you should kind of hit TDLDR up. They have their MPJE um, uh, state specific plans and it's $75 worth worth every penny. Uh, Because I think that the first thing you want to do is make sure that once you get that residency, you keep that residency. Uh, And many RPDs this year uh, are going to be in a lot of trouble because they are Just like last year, they're going further and further down the list uh, to their, you know, less uh, the the people that they didn't, that they ranked much lower on the list. So again, we've talked about this where, you know, if you're a pharmacy student applying, you're going to get your top three choices, 91%, um, 50% of uh, residency sites, uh, if there are four, you know, spots available, are going to go higher than their 12th 
So that is a very big difference in terms of how much they wanted you versus how much you wanted them. And I think that uh, that going that deep, as we see the number of residencies continue to go up and the number of applications continue to go down, uh, the quality of the students that are coming in in terms of their ability to pass the NAPLEX and MPJE, these are independent events for statistical purposes, uh, is going to go down. So a lot of them are already knowing that they're going to have one or two that, that are going to fail. So don't be that person. <laughs> uh, be the person that passes. So what should you do until match day? I think that really, it really is, you know, your head's going to be crazy. If you can pick one or two topics that are going to be good for the next uh, appy, that's great. Maybe that's something that, that would make it worth it. Uh, if there's a topic that you're working on now, that would do it. But I think really planning over the next 10 days is really the best thing you can do. Um, most of uh, the students that are thinking about residency are so excited to quit their retail job and community job. And uh, it's not uncommon for a lot of people to leave their positions as they, you know, now they know they're going to have a job and, and it becomes real. But uh, I would really hesitate to, to say that maybe it's going to be a little bit better to kind of maybe take a couple of days for yourself, maybe even take a week for yourself. But to do stack some cash because uh, inflation's not going away anytime soon. Uh, those retail positions, uh, my wife and I both got offers for signing bonuses that were greater than your residency salary. So just the bonus, not the actual salary, uh, was greater than the uh, actual pay that a resident's going to get. Uh, so uh, again, studying for the NAPLEX, studying for the MPJE, setting up those uh, calendars are really a great job, a really great idea. Um, so there are some you know, practical questions that kind of come along with this too. Can you use the same letters of recommendation for phase two? Yes, but do you want to? So if you got a lot of interviews and you just maybe didn't interview well, yeah, use the same letters. But if you didn't really get a lot of interviews, then maybe you need to figure out which of those is toxic and just email them like, hey, were you able to write a positive letter? And yes, you're going to feel very bad about it, but at least you can get rid of it. But you know, one of the is probably going to say, hey, you know, I, I just really couldn't recommend you. We just didn't have the best experience together in the appy. That doesn't mean you're not qualified for residency. It just means you had a bad experience with one person. You know, in relationships that you dated someone and it just never really got off the ground, never really worked out. And then with that, someone else, it, it worked out fine. You didn't change. You're the same person. It was just a different bad match. Uh, and just as you can poorly match to a residency site, you can poorly match to an appy. Uh, for example, mine is really a good summer appy. My um, summer is really the, the best place to to do an academic rotation at my site because I'm one of the only places that actually has face-to-face -face teaching and uh, you, you really have an opportunity to kind of uh, take that time to get ready for your other appies, maybe reflect on the one before. Uh, you're also getting ready for NAPLEX because you're doing a lot of pharmacology work. Uh, and what it really does is it makes you so competent for the next appy as well. So when I talk about like, you know, is this a good idea? You know, I think an academic appy is really great in the summer. Uh, that's a really great time to do it. So I'm excited to have a full summer with three uh, students. Uh, and I know it's going to go really well. And they're going to, especially if they're looking for residency, be able to have the time to put together letters of recommendation and use them as they should be. I mean, not letters of recommendation, but letters of intent and use them as they should be as a reflective process to figure out what they really want to do. And then already have that done, already have a... Uh, teaching philosophy done. And, and it really goes a long way uh, to have this extra kind of very practical uh, training in academia. So anyway, um, you know, I won't go much longer here, but uh, when it comes to phase two, um, there are going to be a lot of spots. Um, this is the least qualified graduating class ever to graduate pharmacy school. Uh, and the next year will be even less qualified and the next year will be even less qualified. And then it goes up a little bit where they reduced acceptance rates. But this graduating class was accepted over 80% um, to, to pharmacy school. 
And there's just a point where you run out of people that are truly qualified, that are truly competitive. And there are a number of diploma mills that are just, you know, passing these students, getting them to to the finish line. And uh, residency program directors know this. The good news for you is if you're not that kind of person, then, you know, you are able to compete very well in phase two. So if you are thinking about phase two, you know, give me a holler, uh, Tony, the pharmacist at gmail.com, or just go to residency.teachable.com. We've got the phase two course um, and it tells you exactly what to do. Uh, and then I help you one-on-one and I'll get your uh, you know cover letter back to you in a day or two at most. Um, but for those of you that, uh, and here it is, residency.teachable.com forward slash P forward slash phase two. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I will help you with the a cover letter revision um, on that. So um, the big thing is with phase two and kind of uh, this last minute thing, this is the big uh, trick, or if you want to call it that, you do not have to wait to submit your application until you can contact the sites. You can contact the sites immediately on match day, in match day afternoon. And what you want to do is contact as many sites as you can. And whoever you hear back from, consider them as a place to apply. And whoever you don't hear back from, consider them as maybe not a place to apply. What this does is it gives you a better chance to match in phase two, because those that are in phase two that don't get back to you may already have somebody they want. And those that don't, are emailing you back because they are truly interested in you. So the biggest recommendation besides getting the toxic recommendation out I can give you is that on match day, if you didn't match, start contacting the programs. You can get an interview before um, you even submit your application. And many people don't realize that. So if you're in phase two, uh, I, I can get things done pretty quickly for you in terms of turning around a, a letter of intent. Um, so I'm happy to help you with that. All right, Tony, the pharmacist at gmail.com. Hope this was helpful. Uh, and again, if you've worked with me, make sure you tell me how you did on match day. I'm so excited to hear. Pharmacy Residency Podcast, a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. You might also like to check out our available residency audiobooks at pharmacyresidencypodcast.com forward slash books, where you can get your first book free if you've never been on Audible before, or work one-on-one with me as a professional editor at residency.teachable.com. Feel free to send an invite to connect with me, Tony Farm D, on LinkedIn, or email me at tonythepharmacist at gmail.com with questions. Music was by Policy.